Welcome to Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Our community began in 1989 as a small worldwide unity book study group, and we've continued the momentum as an ever-evolving spiritual community. Each Sunday, you will find dynamic thought leaders delivering inspiring messages and talented musicians sharing sound healing through their melody. Here, we embrace ancient spiritual traditions, universal truths, and emerging wisdom. Let's check out this Sunday message. We're so grateful you've joined us. Morning blessings, bright souls. Thank you for being here. My name is Amy Van Ling, and I am wholeheartedly, joyfully in service as spiritual director here to this powerful community we call Brent, Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Um, and we are here to share love and inspire. We're, what we're interested in here is liberating limiting belief systems by knowing thyself so we can live on purpose and radiate peace and compassion and love and joy into the world um, with our thoughts, our words, our actions, and just taking that, that responsibility and being responsive to life and the unfoldment. And, and also part of that is, you know, being the, um, being that kind, loving presence versus a harsh critic, you know, to others and to ourselves. Remember yourself in that. <laughs> so welcome into our space. We welcome you into our spiritual community and we thank you for joining us and choosing to create with us, choosing to uh, vibrate that high frequency love vibration into the world. We're grateful for your presence. Hi, Kelly. Good morning. Welcome in. Hi, Kathy. Welcome in. Kathy says, good morning. Greetings, beloved. So grateful to be together this morning. Um, remember that you can embrace everybody logging in, tuning in, those you can see, those you can't see, uh, because we have that ability, that opportunity to do that energetically, even whatever platform we're on. So in this space, we can expand that loving vibration into the world by just really pouring that vibration out from ourselves into the people, into the, into the screen even. It's amazing, but it does work. Hi, Stephen. Welcome in. Stephen is here this morning with us. Good to see you. Yeah, well, thank you everybody for joining us. I invite you to just lean into the love, you know, drop into that space where you can feel yourself you know, where you're present and where that's where all possibility abounds and you find your freedom and unconditional love. And uh, we're grateful. We're grateful to be on this journey together. And if you're visiting us for the first time, we're so glad that you're here. We encourage you to reach out to us, connect with us through um, email on our website, brentwoodilc.org. If you're watching the replay later on YouTube, the link to our website is right below the video. So you can click right in there and connect with us. Uh, we're grateful because no matter what time you're watching, you're co-creating with us. That's pretty, pretty cool the way that works in, in the world, in our, in our um, creation. Welcome in, everybody. We say good morning. We love you. We bless you. We see you. Dennis is here from New York. He says, howdy. Welcome, welcome, Dennis. Good to see you. So it is with deep appreciation, love, and gratitude in my heart that I welcome back Robin Rice Olmstead. We're so grateful for her. Thank you, beloved, for saying yes, your sacred yes to us. Uh, thank you for hmm, the genuine love, kindness, and beauty you bring, not only to us every time you're with us, but to everybody in the world and all the things that you do and all the, the hands and hearts that you touch in the world. And, and Robin, and she touches a lot. She has a lot of hats that she wears. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> and so I know uh, how tremendously powerful you are in the world and we're so grateful for you. So thank, thankful that you're spending time with us this morning. And Robin is sharing the message this morning, Timeless Whispers. And I'm excited to hear this message. I know everybody is. If you have thoughts, comments, questions during Robin's talk, leave them in the feed on our Facebook chat because when she concludes, we'll have a little Q&A at the end and we can um, we can chat a little bit and that's always fun. And there is a workshop today and that's at 1130 um, following, right following our service this morning from 1130 to 1230 Pacific time. And the workshop today is Your Story Matters. So come and dive in with us to... Uh, to divine possibilities and and really just reaching into that 
that depth uh, where we grow and, and heal and expand and shift and, and make such huge transformations in life. And sometimes, you know, it's, it, that kind of thing happens in one workshop. So come and join us, invite everybody. Everybody is welcome. That's why I always say, share with your neighbors, share with everybody on Messenger, just bring everybody in because we, the more the merrier. That's our theme here. <laughs> so uh, that's happening today. And we're so grateful for you, Robin. Thank you for saying yes and being with us and bringing your, your powerful, loving energy to us. We're, we're tremendously uh, full of gratitude. And we are also so full of gratitude that we have the soulful, spectacular singer, songwriter, Kalyani Marsh with us. Uh, she always comes in sharing her sensational sounds and sound healing and just deep, deep, soulful beauty and just creates such a loving activation every time. And I'm so blessed that you're here. We are so blessed. You're we're so grateful that you've been so but such a part of an integral part of our community for so long. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so much gratitude flowing through everybody. I, I feel it this morning. It's very potent. Pat's here. She says, good morning, family. Yes, indeed. Good morning, Pat. Pat says with me today here are Matt and Kathy. Yay. Nice. Glad you're all together. That's always fun to be together on a Sunday morning. And who else is on our screen but our own Jennifer Simpson. She is uh, here to share our selected inspirational readings, some community announcements, and our prayer of plentitude. And she is just such a beautiful, loving, peaceful presence in our communities. Uh, definitely just such a integral part of, of the workings of Brentwood Inspired Living Center. And we're grateful for you sharing your loving energy with us uh, this morning and always. So we all welcome you into our this space. This is a space in consciousness. It feels like a space in a Zoom room, but it really is so much more than that. And uh, thank you. Thank you for committing your heart and your energy to coming together to activate this space, to embody love in the world. You know, it takes all of us. And so we welcome you in, Robin, Kalyani, Jennifer, and I say, welcome, we love you, we bless you. Thank you for being here and tuning in with us. So our theme for um, this month of August has been the whisper of wisdom. And um, it's really kind of a, it's kind of a cool thing because, you know, it's very, very spiritual side. And then there's a very scientific side. And I was reading um, a quote that uh, Plato, so we're talking, you know, th around 300 BC, he said, wisdom alone is the science of other sciences. And I had to sit with that for a while. Hmm. And I think it's worth, you know, noting that he's got something there because there's a number of seemingly fuzzy, I guess you could call them psychological constructs that were previously thought to be like non-scientific or non-biological because they couldn't really be defined um, objectively, you know, for instance, like consciousness or um, resilience or well-being, but with advances, you know, in, in all of our scientific ways of being able to study and neurobiological um, advances, they've all become accepted as important scientific entities, you know, like that they really affect. And, and so, um, so while wisdom has sort of always been in that fuzzy kind of area, it's really moving into what Plato was talking about, you know, he was on to something is what I'm saying. And, you know, as spiritual communities, uh, you know, we're speaking of consciousness, you know, long before science sort of backed it up, wisdom appears to sort of be in that same, you know, moving in that same uh, similar trajectory anyway. And, um, and really coming to the conclusion now that uh, wisdom has uh, so many findings are supporting that it like what what we call ancient wisdom for eons is is really really something you know it's really linked to better overall mental physical health happiness life satisfaction resilience um, and wisdom likely they say likely increases with age well I think we all know that it probably does. <laughs> that was, we didn't need, you know, empirical studies for that one. But so anyway, it's a really full, great, rich topic. And I'm so glad to be exploring it this month. And I'm really excited that, that Robin is here to dive into it. So we are going to um, do that. We're going to dive in. So welcome in everybody. We're going to open up with our mission statement. So I invite you to tune in and, and, and invigorate and enliven this mission statement because we truly are. Um, we truly are on a mission here. So feel into this. We are an open, heart-centered, spiritual community 
honoring the one presence within us. And we welcome all to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. And I love that we have wisdom in our mission statement. <laughs> so we're going to open up with our community song. Remember that our community song is, is a moment of encouragement for you to sing out loud at home, to get your throat chakra open, to get your heart space open and move that energy through. So I'm going to hand the screen to Kalyani now. Thank you, my love. Thank you, Amy. Greetings, everyone. Um, happy to be here with you. Uh, I wanted to share a, uh, a chant in honor of Maui and just wanting to send some love over there. And uh, this is a chant I heard a long time ago and just recently I heard it again and I was really um, enjoying it and feeling the, the, uh, the mana, the, the power of this chant. And um, it, it's called a malama, and a lot of you know malama means to care for and to nurture. And uh, in the chant, it says a malama ika heyao, and heyao is a is a temple, and it's very sacred. And uh, the uh, the next line, a malama pono. May we care for ourselves. May we care for others. May we care for the land. Um, earth and sky, sea and stone, hold this land in sacredness. And I added, hold this heart in sacredness. Um, so those are basically the lyrics. Uh, so hopefully you can catch on. <laughs> E malama e ka heiau, e malama pono e ka heiau, e e malama e ka heiau, e malama e ka heiau, e malama pono e ka heiau, e. Earth and sky, sea and stone, hold this land in sacredness. Earth and sky, sea and stone, hold this land in sacredness. E malama e ka heiau, e malama e ka heiau, e malama pono e ka heiau, e malama e ka heiau, e malama e ka heiau, e malama pono e ka heiau, e. Earth and sky, sea and stone, hold this land in sacredness. Earth and sky, sea and stone, hold this heart in sacredness. E malama e ka heiau, e malama e ka heiau, e malama pono e ka heiau, e e malama e ka heiau, e malama e ka heiau, e malama pono e ka heiau, e. Earth and sky, sea and stone, hold this land in sacredness. Earth and sky, sea and stone, hold this land in sacredness. 
much Kalyani for bringing that to us mm, mm. just um, a powerful reminder for us you know that our ability to send healing energy remotely um, is there you know we have that ability and what a beautiful way to do that you know through sound vibration and a healing chant like that so thank you so much I posted the lyrics in the in the feed and um, and we can also change it to the heart, hold this land and sacredness, hold this heart and sacredness. I encourage us to use that uh, chant this weekend, moving forward. Anytime, you know, it's on the news, anytime we hear about Maui, um, you know, rather than kind of going into that restriction of fear or, you know, a, a lower vibration energy, uh, go into this chant. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for your sharing. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen over to Jennifer now. She has our inspirational reading and some community announcements for us. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Amy. And thank you, Kalyani, for that beautiful blessing. Good morning, everyone. So glad that you have joined us on Facebook Live. So now just a few very important announcements. Be sure to stay for Robin's always engaging workshop after the service beginning at 1130 and goes till 1230. The title of her workshop is Your Story Matters. You won't be disappointed as we always have a lively discussion. And remember to use the QR code or follow the link on our website, brentwoodilc.org to offer your donation to our center. We are truly so appreciative. What a wonderful midday gathering we had yesterday in the West Island Room. Opportunities to learn from each other about how wisdom in its many forms has impacted our lives. And we had delicious food at the potluck. So thank you to all who participated. Yes, we're doing it again. September 16th, we'll be having our second mini yard sale this year. It will be held at Jan's home in Somerset 4 in Brentwood. Check to see if you've missed something that you no longer need or love and save it for our sale. This time, we will be accepting clothing as well as small furniture items. Sign up with Nancy or Jan for assisting in your favorite ways. There will be a pre-sale yard sale on Thursday, September 14th from 4 to 7, also at Jan's house. So come on over and get first dibs on great merchandise as an early bird. And as the yard sale ends, join the 360 band in Jan's backyard for our community appreciation luncheon beginning at 12 noon. This is our celebration of our community. You don't want to miss it. We hope to see all of you there so we can celebrate you. Also mark your calendar for our eighth annual Peace Walk and Candlelight Community Celebration to be held at Brentwood Community Park coming on Tuesday evening, September 26, beginning at 6.30. Bring your family and friends and join us in sending our message, our energy, and our prayers for peace out to our city and around the world. 
And please remember to check the website and like and share our Facebook page to stay updated on lots of new upcoming events. Blessings and gratitude to all of you. And so now we're moving into our inspirational reading, which is an excerpt from the book, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, The Wisdom of Living of the Tao by Dr. Wayne Dyer. There's value in the non-action of being able to flow like water naturally and effortlessly. I can't help but think of this when I enter the ocean to swim for an hour or so. I wanna go with the current rather than swim against it. So my first choice involves seeing which way the water is coursing. As I move through the sea, emulating its naturalness, I trust my instinct and swim without trying to direct my arms and legs in their strokes. I think of it as doing, but not interfering. That is, I'm allowing my body to propel itself through the water without my mind telling it how to move. As I've changed my thoughts about hard and soft, I don't have to do anything but be in the water. I've chosen to make my daily swim a soft, silent experience that requires very little action on my part. And my swimming world has changed, becoming easy, joyful, and almost effortless. I've learned the value of non-action as Latsu expresses it's performing without action. Apply this way of seeing everything in your world. Tasks will be simplified, your performance level will increase, and the pressure to be better than others by using superior hardened strength will cease to be a factor. You'll naturally incorporate the wisdom of, the, of peaceful harmony that's found in the martial arts by letting the efforts of others become a source of your own power. Your softness will override the hardness of others. Soft always has its place, for it is the watercourse way, the way of the Tao. Thank you. Mm, that was so beautiful. Thank you, Jennifer, for that reminder, too. I love how water is so often used in teachings. You know, I think as Mark Nepo also had something, love like water. And, you know, what is soft is strong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen back over to Kalyani for our next song this morning. Thank you, beloved. Yeah, thank you for that. I remember when I did live in Hawaii, someone told me water is love. And I was always afraid. I, when I first moved there, I was afraid of the ocean. And then I just remembered water is love and I would just float in the ocean. And it was definitely a super healing um, part of my journey. Um, so uh, this next piece is uh, very recent. And I was listening to uh, Jetta Molly. I don't know if you know who she is. She's a spiritual teacher from the UK and she was talking about being in service and sometimes when we are being in service we forget about the being part like what is the energy what how does it feel you know every moment as we uh, are on call you know to be in service and so I wrote this um, for myself being of service. I'm in service to my soul. I recognize my mind is learning to be quiet. I'm in service to my soul. I recognize my mind is learning to be quiet. And I don't need to know, just listening, I allow my soul to guide. And I don't need to know, 
just listening, I allow my soul to guide. I am your human being. What will you have me do? I am your human being of service. I am your human being. What will you have me do? I am in service to my being. I am in service to my soul. I recognize my mind learning to be quiet I agree to play my part agree to share my gifts agree to share my presence I agree to play my part agree to share my gifts Agree to share my presence. I am your human being. What will you have me do? I am your human being of service. I am your human. me do. I am in service to my being. I'm in service to my soul. I recognize my mind is learning to be quiet. I I'm willing to make peace. I'm willing to make peace my contribution. I am your human being. What will you have me do? I am your human being of service. I am your human being. What will you have me do? I am in service to my being. I'm in service to my soul. I recognize my mind is learning to be quiet and I don't need to know just listening I allow my soul to guide I allow my soul to guide What a beautiful song. I love that song. It always really speaks to the whispers of wisdom, doesn't it? You know, because Thank you. really, what, what what am I here to do? What, 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 how is my soul here to serve? Comes often in those whispers, right? <laughs> so uh, thank you for bringing that beauty to us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to hand the screen over to Jennifer now. She has our blessing of abundance for us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I do really appreciate that reminder of setting the intention to be in service and how that just instantly connects us to our divine purpose. So thank you, Kalyani. This is our sacred time for our prosperity blessing. So I invite you to join me and 
as we move into a space of oneness, a space of oneness with spirit. So as we connect with our breath, we quiet our minds and open to the great realization of an abundant universe. We connect with an inner stillness that is grounded in the divine flow of giving and receiving. We practice gratitude for all that life gives us and accept there is more coming our way. We align and operate from our divine nature to give freely from a compassionate heart to ourselves and others, assured we are never void. We set our intention to engage in right action that attracts opportunities to prosper. We are each a very grateful spirit expanding in this human life. We are gratefully succeeding in stepping forward into greater good. And so it is. Thank you, beloved. Yes, we are stepping. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hand the screen back to you, Kalyani, for our closing song, or I should say our song that's going to bring us into the morning message. Beautiful. Okay, check, check. Am I still here? I'm still here? Okay. <laughs> um, so this is a song I wrote a long time ago, and then I forgot about it, and I didn't have any notes about it, and I thought, what is that? And then I, I knew it was inspired by this this book um and and i found the notes that i took from the book and i was like oh right that i wrote that song and then so i've reconstructed it now and it's called make happy and it's a very playful song and it was really a message to me about how to uh tune in that to that playful part of myself and um and uh so it has re-emerged <laughs> Make happy. I'm supposed to do what makes me happy. Oh yeah. Follow the inner guidance that knows. Take a risk and start creating. Pay attention. You're learning how to play and it's kind of like a game. Be like a child and just experiment. Be willing to go slow. Focus on your goal to make happy. I'm supposed to do what makes me happy. Oh yeah. Follow the inner guidance that goes into a new territory. How does it feel? To freely participate with the excitement of a child and the courage to express oneself. Be willing to let go. You're not alone. Let's make happy. Make happy. Be willing not to know. Oh no, I will let others try to figure it out. I'll be taking it step by step, moment by moment. I won't let the world get me down. I will show you my child, you show me yours. We will jump into the stream, jump into the unknown. We're not alone. Let's make happy. Running and jumping with our hands in the air. Let's make happy. Running and jumping with our hands in the air. Let's make happy. Running and jumping with our hands in the air. 
Let's make happy. Thank you for that. It just makes me, <laughs> you know, it, it, I've had the last two days, I had my 17 month old granddaughter with me and, um, you know, just look at a 17 month old, everything's happy. <laughs> They're just jumping. Totally. For joy. I mean, kids That's what we're going everybody. for. <laughs> That's right. That's why it made me think of her, you know, since that childlike innocence to just love everybody and be friendly and and we had her at this event yesterday. And I mean, she's blowing kisses to everybody, waving everybody. Like, what if we were all just perfect life like that? Yeah, we would right. have a joyful world. That's Thank a beautiful example. <laughs> bringing that to Thank us. Um, sending so Happy much love and appreciation. Finally again. Mm, we're grateful <laughs> for you. Thank you. And thank you, Jennifer, so, both for activating this space with joy and opening that vibrational portal of love for us this morning, getting us going. We're grateful for you. Um, thank so you all for being here. Love. And Kalyani can be found on Bandcamp and SoundCloud. And I know she's got her website still work, getting in the works, right? Or not really, but not you really. can find her out there. <laughs> I tagged her in yeah. my post this morning. So I'm somewhere out there. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate thank you. you. All. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Well, Robin, it is always my joy and gratitude to spend time with you. Thank you, dear one, for being with us. And, you know, it really is a sacred yes to share time and energy with, with another. And you're sharing with our whole community. And so we're grateful. We're grateful that you're willing to, um, to give yourself to us, bless us in that way. It's gift. You're a gift. So the, for those getting to know Robin, I'm going to share her bio for you so you can get to know her better. And then I'll pray us in and then hand the screen over and Robin will take us away into our timeless whispers. Robin Rice Olmsted is a licensed spiritual practitioner. Her primary training is from the Agape International Spiritual Center, a trans-denominational spiritual community founded by Dr. Michael Beckwith. Robin was licensed as a religious science practitioner in 2001. While Agape has moved out from under the guidelines of the United Centers for Spiritual Living, Robin is clear that both movements are about love and the power one has to change themselves, fully express, and create a life of infinite possibility. Standing in the oneness of both organizations' mission, she chose to retain both of her licenses and is currently licensed as an ASLP, Agape Licensed Spiritual Practitioner, and an RC, RSCP practicing at the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. Robin is also an actress, writer, and teacher. I mentioned those many hats uh, and hearts she touches in the world. She refers to herself as an act artivist, and she's very passionate about social and global issues and loves combining this with anything artsy and in inspiring. She has worked with youth and adults of all ages, teaching them empowerment, conflict resolution, and anything that leads them to their greater understanding and self-celebration. She is very proud of her spiritual writing and improvisation classes. It is an honor and a joy to guide people to the portal of their greater yes, leading them to unlock their greatest possibilities. She currently has a podcast with her husband, Gil, on the New Thought Media Network called Rockin' the Love. She is passionate about travel and meeting new people. As I told you, she's splendid. <laughs> and we're so grateful that she's here with us. So if you would um, tune in and if close your outer eye, if that feels comfortable for you, we're going to pray into this moment and just breathing in that spirit of divine intelligence, the all knowingness of spirit aligning with the power in this universe, claiming the ever presence everywhere, active essence of our life the great spirit of God. We recognize it in our own eyes, in the eyes of anyone that appears before us to be the other. We are one with the light. We are the light. Today is blessed and is a blessing. And I give great thanks for our gathering together, the celebration of community. We cover Robin with our immense gratitude, our great love, deep appreciation for the blessing that she is. And I release this word into the great arms of the infinite universe of love and joy and possibility. And so it is. Ashe, namaste. Thank you, Robin. I'm going to hand the screen over to you. We appreciate you. Timeless whispers, everybody. Thank you, Amy. Oh, my goodness. I feel so full already. Good morning, Brentwood Inspired Living. 
And good morning to uh, Matt and Kathy and John out there. I saw you all. So glad you're here with me. It's so good to be back. And it's it's so true, all that Amy says in the beginning, like you can really feel the vibration of this community just resonating out in the world. Whew. I feel like Kehlani did my talk and my workshop in her three songs. <laughs> I was like, I got nothing more than that. It was so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Oh, can you all believe how fast this year has gone? I can't believe that we literally have four months left in the year. In fact, we're almost four months exactly until Christmas. Huh. Okay, as scary as that may sound, just pause for a minute and be super grateful that we are new thought metaphysicians and that we hold the belief that there is no time. Oh, so we don't have to get boxed into our thoughts and our stories, because that's what happens to me when I start to think about something like that. All of a sudden, I, 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 I'm behind already in, in what I need to do to be prepared for Christmas. But that, that actually brought up my topic, because I wondered as I was thinking about that, like, is that the timeless whisper? Because like in my head, I've heard these stories over and over and I, I hear it gnawing at me about, you know, what I need to do and how Christmas needs to look or the holidays or any of those special occasions. And I feel my body start to tighten and my stomach start to get that kind of acidic feeling. And it's just a slippery slope from there. And I, I just want to take a nap. And I think, okay, that can't be the whisper because that seems pretty loud to me most of the time. But maybe it could be, but I don't think so. So as I began to think about this, I knew that it was not timeless because that story I tell myself changes. And if you have a story that you're not letting go of, the, na the narration will repeat itself in your head. But if you change the story, the narration changes. So it couldn't be timeless. The definition of timeless, when I looked it up, is never changing, not affected by the passage of time. And the synonyms are like lasting and ageless and invariable and unending and eternal. So I thought a timeless whisper can only be based on spiritual principles and the universal truths that we know. So what do we know? We know that God is everywhere and in, as, and through everything. And we know that God is love. And so we know that we are made in the image and likeness of the divine. So we are that love. We know that God is abundance. We know that God is goodness and kindness and beauty and grace and, and can be nothing else but all, all of those amazing, infinite possibilities. And we are all one with that. So only the truth can be timeless. A whisper, a timeless whisper, has to be in tune with the spiritual truth. Those are the whispers. So the reminders are sometimes so low that we can miss them. Those whispers sometimes we have learned to just drown them out with our inner critics. And we've grown up in a society that's taught us that, right? That, that paying attention to the media or we can engage us in those thoughts about if we're doing something right or if we need more training or if we're too old or too fat or too thin or too short. Or... So how do we quiet those voices and invite in the whispers? So let's explore some of these questions. When is it that we most tune into our to the whispers? These are the ones that support you and remind you of the truth. And by echoing who you are, that you are fabulous, that you are the perfect person for the job, that no one can do the job the way that you can, that you are a unique expression 
and only you can do what you do. All of that. I'd love to hear your answers. Put put them in the chat and we'll talk about them later. But what when is it that we tune into that? And in the meantime, I'm going to give you my theory. I think that all beings it all no I think that it all begins with our passions and our intuition. And more specifically, I would say I think it begins when we ignore our passions or our intuition. Okay, so everyone just take a breath for a minute and just check in with your body. And let me ask you, are you ignoring your passion? Or are you ignoring a passion that wants to come through? Is there something calling you that you're hesitating on, on doing? Take another breath. Keep breathing. No judgment. It's okay. It's okay. Just, just watch. Just allow the information to come through and just be with it for a minute. Are you willing to live your passion? Okay, so just play with me here for a minute. So what exactly is passion? Because we talk a lot about passion. I read a statistic that said that passion is mentioned in over 80% of graduation speeches. Follow your passion, grab onto your passion, do something you're passionate about and you'll never work a day in your life, all of those things. So what exactly is passion? I'm sure you have some ideas. Well, the Oxford Dictionary says a strong and barely controllable emotion or a state of outburst of strong emotion. Passion to me feels very vibrational. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it. I can feel it in your center. It's, it's exactly what we talked about. You can feel that vibration of, of passion. Now, Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of Science of Mind and a philosopher, he said that um, passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. This quote reminds us that the passion is not something that we have to find outside of ourselves, but something that we already have within us. It already exists within us just because we are a divine child of God. And so we are that love and passion and desire that spirit is. And that is great, right? Except when it's not. What happens when we lose sight of that? What happens on that day when you just don't want to or you just can't feel it? You ever have one of those days where you just aren't feeling the love and the joy and the peace that you are? We've all had them. <laughs> I know you have. That's probably a super great day for those voices to dance in our heads, right? We begin to hear those voices saying, oh, Robin, you should really do this. Or why aren't you doing that? Or, oh, don't do that. There's someone that does it better than you do. And it gets louder and louder and louder and sometimes becomes deafening, right? Who knows what I'm talking about out there? So this happens to all of us at some point in time, in some way, shape, or form. I remember early on when I started dating my husband, Gil, and I asked him a question. And I was probably, you know, it was probably one of those romantic moments where, I don't know, I wanted to plan our next vacation or getaway and I said to him what's on your bucket list what are you passionate about and he said um and I began to panic thinking <laughs> am I am I am I moving in the wrong direction is he not the man for me la, 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 la. voices and he, he said I don't have a bucket list and I said, uh, okay, well, what are you passionate about? And 
he didn't really answer. He couldn't really answer. He's like, I don't know. I'm like, well, what do you want to do before you die? Or where do you want to go? Where do you want to visit? <clears throat> and he didn't really have answers. I mean, he made one up for me. He told me Italy or something, but it, it wasn't coming from that place of like, oh, this is what I've always wanted to do. And I knew he was passionate. I'd heard him talk about it, all the things he wanted to do, but I realized that he was too afraid to express his desires out loud because what if they didn't happen? He was too afraid to really live into his passion. And I can guarantee you that the other voices yelling in his head outweighed that supportive, affirmative whisper of the divine. I think a lot of us might be able to relate to that. <laughs> I mean, I know that there's times when fear has stopped me. So how do we move past what stops us? Fear, doubt, limitation. How do we train ourselves to listen to our intuition and allow it to nudge us forward? Yelani Song said it so beautifully. <laughs> In, in being in the silence and listening that for that whisper that tells us that we are more than whatever is holding us down. The same calling that has led you here today, the same calling that keeps you coming back here for these messages. I think that when we're not following our passions, the whispers alert us that we are not in sync with our highest good. So what does one do when they find themselves not knowing what to do? Maybe you're burnt out, maybe you're frustrated, maybe you're unsure of your next steps, where or how to regain that power and really resync with the whispers of our soul. I think that we have to go back to basics. We have to begin with our understanding of our oneness with spirit. This is the place where the magic happens. It's in our awareness that we're inseparable from the divine. And I mean, inseparable, like yin and yang and thunder and lightning or a needle and thread. Yes, they may all be able to exist separately, but at some point they come back together to get the job done. So when do we really realize that we are inseparable from the one? When do we remember and know that the passion is inside of us? No matter how buried it may be, we have to align with that truth to begin the journey to uncover it. So this can look a lot of ways, right? And going back to the question and the feeling tone I asked you about, what messages what did your body give you? What is your body telling you about passion? Your passion may be dancing and ready to play, or it may feel hidden. It may feel buried. It may feel non-existent or neglected or any of those things. But no matter what it is, it is there. And it is unique to you. And you have come to this world to share this passion. And that timeless whisper will not release you from this calling. That timeless whisper wants you to know. That timeless whisper wants you to live into your highest and best. It's the voice of spirit. It's the voice of the universe, the Christ consciousness, God letting you know not to settle that you are more than this. And sometimes it may feel like a spiritual two by four, right? But it's, it's like the reminder you um, alarm, you set on your phone is part of your divine blueprint. It's like God said, Siri, set a reminder so that your internal alarm would sound. Minimal snoozing aloud. It's your time to really Live into and explore your passions and your divine calling. 
Our passion is the energy that fuels our creativity and our motivation and our joy. When we focus on what excites us, we tap into this energy and unleash potential. Last week, Amy talked about wisdom and knowledge in the newsletter. And Reverend Verona reminded us that we are the knowingness of the divine. We are the knowingness of the divine. You are the knowingness of the divine. I am the knowingness of the divine. Can I choose to listen to that? Can I choose to listen to the timeless whisper that supports the truth of who I am? The whispers are our affirmations. The whispers are our knowingness. The whispers and the intuition are what liberates our limiting beliefs. So there are many ways that we can reconnect to things that we are passionate about that make us happy, that and, and just to reawaken that feeling within us. And we're going to explore some of those in the workshop today, if, if you're coming. So we'll dive a little deeper. Um, but if you're not sure about what brings you passion, I would say get curious. Get curious. Ask questions. Your body will answer. Your intuition will guide you. Allow yourself to truly dive deep and ask the questions. And remember, what brings you joy? What do you miss doing? What are some things that other people tell you you're good at or they come to you for? Take baby steps and just explore this. For example, if you love listening to music, but you never have time to sit down and enjoy it, do it. Set aside a little block of time and do it. If you love art, but you haven't been to a museum in years, Maybe it's time to reconnect with that passion or take, a, take in a class. There's no action too big or too small. <laughs> Excuse me. Passion and intuition are a powerful force and they can inspire us and guide us to pursuing our dreams. And it helps us overcome our challenges and live a fulfilling life. Passion is also a gift that we can share <clears throat> by offering our talents and skills and enthusiasm to the world. So I'm going to leave you with this story. And I share this story. I debated whether or not to share the person's name in this story, but I'm going to not for sake of the person's name, but because I think it's important to the story and that they would would want this story to be told on some level. I had the honor and um, privilege a few years ago of uh, picking up my friend's friend at the airport who was coming in to support her when she was running for mayor. And her friend was Marianne Williamson. So for those of you who may not know, Marianne Williamson is a um, great spiritual author and um, currently running for president of the United States, actually. So she's many things. Um, definitely worth the Google if you don't know her. But anyway, I picked Marianne up at the airport and um, she got in my car and I was driving her to her hotel and we started talking and I think I said, how are you? <laughs> and she proceeded to tell me. And she went into the story about, oh my God, I'm not sure. I was just on Oprah and I don't know if I did a good job. And I was so nervous. And my friend said, well, don't, don't, look at, don't look at Oprah like she's Oprah. Pretend you're talking to me. It's okay. and." And just just keep talking about what you know. And she, but she continued to talk about. Well, I, I, I truly, I was having an intimate conversation with the voices in her head because she talked about 
all of the, her fears and doubts and worries around this. And she's like, I mean, how can I do that? I, it's Oprah. And I thought, oh my God, but you're Marianne Williamson. So I tell that story because we all have those voices. And um, I have some friends that were just at the Parliament of World Religions where she spoke. And I asked them what she they came away with. And they said, the last thing she said was, when I leave, I want to know that I left it all on the table. And no, having spent some more time with her, that's so who she is. And that's so the charge and what I would, ask of you is to leave truly knowing that you've left it all on the table. Mm. So, and don't be held back by those voices. We all have them. So I ask you, if not now, when? When? The good news is you don't have to run for president. <laughs> Whatever your passion is, the time is now to live into the infinite possibility that you are. Passion can't be found in your head because it lives in your heart. The voices are in your head. So no matter how hard you try, you cannot figure out your passion by thinking about it or reasoning with the voices in your head. You need to take action and feel your way to your truth. Discover your passion from the inside out. Allow your intuition and the timeless whispers to lead you. As Kehlani said, I am your human being of service. I am in service to my being. I am in service to my soul. What will you have me do? I allow my soul to guide. Stop, breathe, and listen. Your soul is whispering to you with love. And it will let you know. It will guide you. It will take you there. But will you listen? Thank you. Hmm. Thank you so much, Robin. That was packed full. <laughs> so many really uh, important points you touched on. Um, wow. Yeah, you know, one time I read, uh, it was a transcript or something of of hospice workers, you know, who were people at the very last moments of their life and and their regrets and and things like that. And so you, you really kind of spoke to that with, you know, nothing, leave nothing on the table because, um, I also heard something one time about, you know, that the richest place on earth is, is the cemetery, you know, metaphorically speaking, because all that, all the tr treasures are buried there because people take them with them, the things that they never did or wanted to do or had passion and desire to do. And, oh. you know, that's really deep when you think about it, you know, so thank you for speaking to that. And, um, you know, because I think a lot of people do find themselves sometimes like, well, what is my passion? What, is, what am I to be doing? And, it really comes down to this in the in the whispers and when we and come back to this yes yes thank Your you for saying can change thank it's you like for you don't saying. have to get stuck on one thing that's right because we're always we're always evolving and so what it looked like you know 10 years ago may not look like now and then 10 years from now right we can always be expanding into um, something else. I remember a psychic telling me one time I was going to do something. I thought that doesn't sound like me at all, but I'm open, <laughs> you know, because you just never know what's what, when you stay, when you come into, like you said, number one, back to the oneness, be remembering the oneness with spirit. So important because it just grounds us into that, that divine wisdom, that divine intelligence to know that there's, there's something unfolding here that you know really isn't for me to necessarily mold and manipulate we co-create with it right but to, to really sort of rigidly <laughs> try to make something happen you know never feels quite smooth let me I know people were uh dropping comments in the chat while while you were suggesting that and and speaking so let's um let's go back a little ways and see Pat had said I um 
Kathy, I, hmm, I think maybe something was off there, but hear whispers the most when I'm just waking up in the morning or when I'm hearing a song that seems to speak to me deeply. Mm, maybe that was Kathy saying that on Pat's. <laughs> They're together, so I see what's happening. Um, yeah, when it seems to speak to me when I'm just waking up in the morning. So this kind of goes with the what you were saying, like the quiet. You know, we had a question in our workshop last week with Verona. It's like, is is the stillness and quietness necessary to hear the whispers, right? And uh, it's a definitely a great exploration. But it seems like a lot of times people come back to that, you know, it's when I'm waking up or when I'm still, when I'm quiet, when I'm clearing off the the clutter <laughs> to hear. Jan says, I invite the whisper of wisdom and tune in by going within and listening to that still small voice and then journaling. I think this might've been a question you had posed, right? When one finds, Pat says, when one finds one's passions, many other areas of life fall into place, relationships, abundance, inner peace, et cetera. Mm. Mm. Pat says, amen to all on the table. I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, Kalyani's here. She says, so grateful for this message, Robin. Happy our planets align for this service. <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. Um, yeah appreciate when that happens you know some call it coincidence <laughs> much more than that in my opinion <laughs> wow robin you just brought so so much great uh gold to us in this conversation and and going back to kalyani song you know i i am your human being you know to be to be the conduit for yes. something you were talking about earlier about um passion and um, you said, you, you know, something about it. it's already within us, you know, it's, it's what excites you, but it's already there. I think Neville Goddard said something similar with the, about desire. It's like desire is God putting that desire on your heart, you know, and if it's there, it's it's for you to do, it's yours to do, to put on the table, so to speak. Mm, yeah. um, so really listening to that voice. Thank you. Thank you for those reminders. Thank you for the the practicality too of your talk of like, you know, how, how to do it, <laughs> you know, how to lay this out and, and really listen to those whispers. Um, you said something really cool. You said whispers are our affirmations and that's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm, so okay. much good stuff here. I know we're all full. Let me check back in here. Hi, Christy Cost. I see you've logged in here. Leonard Smith is here. He says, when you pray, you talk to God. When you meditate, God speaks to you. Thank you. Yeah. So we're listening to those whispers, the whispers of wisdom. And uh oh, I took so many notes here. Sometimes it's hard for me to <laughs> decipher what what do I want to read back? Because there's so much good stuff here. This is definitely a talk you want to listen to again and share. Uh, remember, you can share uh, once it's on YouTube, the YouTube link, or just share straight from here from, from Facebook, or go to our website, share from there. But these, this message, you know, is so, it's timeless message and for everybody, because there's not one person out there that doesn't get that, you know, that critic, that, that harsh critic voice, right? Like you were talking about Miriam, it's like, Mary, you know, Miriam and Williamson, I've talked to people who speak on stages, you know, huge stages, and, and they're like, there's always still this little moment, you know, of, of butterflies or whatever. And so it's like, how do we quiet down that harsh critic and really allow that kind, gentle whisper to be at the forefront versus the other? And it's a great conversation because it applies to everybody. <laughs> it is a great conversation. And I think that every, I think, I mean, yes, there are tools like journaling and praying and meditating and all of those things. But I think also the important thing and what people have said is that everybody can do it differently. You know, it doesn't matter. It may be when I go into the kitchen and bake cookies, all of a sudden I God speaks to me or that's where I have the the thing, the, the moment, you know, and it's like, it's really just figuring I think the more we tune into it too the more it happens it begins to happen in other places right. the more we listen the more we hear mm. I just think 
there's there's no right and wrong there's you know just there's just these suggestions right yeah. yeah i i love that point because i think sometimes um it can feel daunting if you think it has to be done a certain way or you come to it through a certain means when really it's it's really tuning into your heart center and that might be while you're painting that might be while you're doing yoga that might be while you're gardening <laughs> baking you know it the download will will come when you're in your sweet spot so to speak and that doesn't look the same uh really for anybody you know because we're all so unique that it's it's going to be slightly different for everybody and and just for the record that it might also be when you're at the job you don't like or doing something that's not your favorite thing to do some of us have to learn that way right through things we really? don't do you know like not just picking flowers and baking and fun things so it's <laughs> just really a matter of not judging it Mm. yeah and allowing your intuition spirit to guide you to speak through you yeah yeah because it's easy to sort of be in that space right or spiritual practice when you're in that joyful happy happy place uh, like Kalyani's song but yet if you're in the most grueling traffic and you're late and you're at a job you loathe you know that's really when okay let me center in here because I'm learning something really that's part of my path and to, re to when we claim that instead of resisting that and uh, sort of embrace it is really when the floodgates can open and say, okay, yeah, you've, you've got this <laughs> and moving forward. I love this conversation. I think we could just keep going, but since we um, are after the hour, what we'll do is um, take a little break here, a nourishment break, hydration break, come back to our workshop where we're going to really unravel and dive in. And this is going to be your story matters. And I love uh, Robin's, you know, per, her lens that she's viewing this through and, and how we're going to unravel the story and open up to divine possibilities um, through your, through your story, you know, and, and this is going to be fun. So come on in, everybody, invite somebody, uh, share it, bring, bring um, whoever's in your house, or if not shut your door and get comfortable to where you're, <laughs> you can focus and enjoy for yourself. And bring uh, a pencil and paper or a journal. Okay, good. Pencil and paper. Anything else? Or a journal, whatever you write in or whatever you want to write on. Okay. Christy said she has heard lots of wisdom through songs. And um, she said, accept it when the higher spirit is kicking you out of a job when you have been ill-treated. <laughs> I can feel that, Christy. <laughs> yes, we have, we have support and affirm uh, when we know it's when something's complete too, sometimes we have to go through that thing to know, ah, I'm complete there. And now, you know, my passion's pulling me here. Or my, the whisper is showing me this other, this other avenue that I didn't, wasn't clear before. Uh, so thank you for sharing. Thank you everybody for being here and sharing with us and, and just bringing yourselves, your souls. I feel, I feel you, we feel you. Uh, thank you, Robin, for bringing you. Uh, what is the best way for everyone to connect with you if they want to touch base with you and see what you're up to? Such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the best way is I have a website uh, called blissiplinejourney.com, mm -hmm. which is spelled B-L-I-S-S-C-I-P-L-I-N-E. And that's, that's the best way, or you can, um, that's it. That's really it. You okay. can't really find me on Facebook right now because I'm trying to recover my hacked account. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that's another story, right? Yeah. Uh, social media. Another talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's another talk entirely. Well, thank you for gifting us with your whispers of wisdom. We're truly grateful for you and everybody uh, taking this all in, if you feel mentally, emotionally, spiritually refreshed, revitalized, inspired by being here with this community, we invite you to uh, visit our giving page and participating with an energetic exchange with us. It declares to the universe that you support the mission of this organization and our nonprofit and our center and our vision and our mission to share love and inspiration and just and just be there, be a beacon for people. Um, and thank you because our center is 100% supported by generous contributions. So we're very, very grateful for those. And thank you for your outpouring of love. We feel it and we 
um, we honor it. You know, we value, we value that energetic exchange. So we are going to close with our uh, prayer of divine awakening. And I invite you to mm, make this a declaration, you know, feel this, like speak it out loud, be uh, one with this prayer. And if you would like a copy of it, um, I have it on the share my screen, but we have uh, hard copies that I can send you if you would like one, or I can email you. So let me know if you'd like to have it at home and in, in front of you. Uh, so feel into this, the prayer of divine awakening. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes and open heart and expansive mind. I choose my vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously, harmonizing with life's events. I'm receptive to source energy, divine guidance and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely. And I move forward in a state of appreciation, an extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free, claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is. Shine on bright beings of love and light. I'm going to drop the link to the workshop right now in the feed. It's also on our website, brentwoodilc.org. You'll see a picture of Kalyani and Robin and then the link into the Zoom workshop. We will see you there in about 10 minutes. Um, be ready to go with your journal and paper and pen and dive in. Thank you, Robin. We bless you. We love you. Uh, mm -hmm. We honor you. Thank you for your sacred yes with us. Look forward to seeing you again. And right now into the workshop, I'm going to drop it here, right in this, this feed. Wow. Blessings, everybody. Thank you, Bye. Robin.